Today, I want to talk about how songwriters use mode changes to create unforgettable mood changes in their songs. When you hear, imagine me and you, I do, and then you hear, I can't see me loving nobody, why does that feel so incredibly uplifting and energetic? And when you hear, I once had a girl, and then you hear, she asked me to stay and she told me to sit anywhere. Why does that feel so dark and mysterious? Why are these songs instantly unforgettable? This is just one of a few videos that I'm making to introduce you to some simple theory concepts that have inspired me to write new songs. I'm also going to include chapters in these videos, so if you hear something that you already know, just skip ahead to the next chapter. I'm also going to show things on a keyboard, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you how to apply these things to the guitar. They each have their advantages in helping you to visualize, internalize, and implement these musical ideas. Now, when I first learned about modes, and the way most people first learned about modes, this is how I learned them. So if we look at a C major scale, no flats or sharps, no black keys, so it's just very easy to look at. If we go from C to C, that's your C major scale. That's the Ionian mode. And then if you move up one note, D to D, that's the Dorian mode. And then the Phrygian mode. And like, what is that though? It's hard to hear that as anything other than just permutations of the C major scale. It doesn't feel the way those examples felt that I played at the top of the video. So what really makes a mode or a scale sound a certain way and how can we use that to make songs that feel like Norwegian wood or so happy together? A scale is not a list of notes. A major scale like C major is... I can play a major scale F sharp major. It, they feel the same. They have the same, I don't know, emotion to them. But they're completely different notes. Why is that? Because a scale is not a list of notes. A scale is a set of intervals. So when Debussy said music is the space between notes, he may have been speaking very literally about this concept right here. So let's start with the C major scale because it's easy to look at. So we'll start with the C. Every note that is consecutive on a keyboard or a guitar, any instrument, that's called a half step. Any note that skips a note to the next note, any interval that skips one note, that's a whole step. Anywhere on the keyboard, half step, whole step half step, whole step. So if we count the intervals from the C, we have a whole step, a whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. If we start on F sharp, we have whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's why they feel the same. All the intervals are the same. You're going to feel very similar feelings when you hear them. So now if I play a scale from G to G, but I stay in the key of C, so I'm not gonna play any of the black keys, we have whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Those last two intervals are flipped. And what would normally be a G major scale, if I went whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, we would have to raise this F to an F sharp in order to make it a G major scale. But instead, if we just stick to the C major scale and play from G to G, we have whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. So we've lowered that seventh note. That's a dominant, it's called a dominant seven because it kind of dominates the conversation. It forces you to find a resolution. Oh, that feels so much better. So if we start at C again, we can do the same thing. We just lower that seventh note. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step whole step. So now we lowered the seventh note, which is B natural, to a B flat. That's a change in the mode. So now instead of thinking about this as Ionian and this as Mixolydian, where we sound like we're still in the same key, we can think of this as Ionian and this as Mixolydian. Now you feel the mode change and the mood changes. A very simple way to apply this particular mode change is like in songs that go to the four, they often use this dominant change to force you to feel like you wanna go somewhere. And when you go to that fourth chord, one, two, three, four, which would be the F, then it feels resolved. So like, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
So a more effective way to feel what mode changes do in music is to keep the same tonal center and change the mode around it. Now you can hear how going from C, Ionian, to G, Mixolydian, feels totally different from going to C, Ionian, to C, Mixolydian. Mood change. So let's look at the first example that I played off the top of the video. It's called So Happy Together. It's by a band called The Turtles. What a great song. It's in the key of F sharp minor, I think, is the original key. I'm going to stick to C so it's easy to look at and easy to see what changes are happening here on the keyboard. Now, a C minor scale has a lowered third, a lowered sixth, and a lowered seventh. And that all that lowering of notes is what makes the chord feel darker and more minor. You are literally going lower with those notes. So C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C, right? So the song starts, da da ba da 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 ba da 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 and then you go to B flat, and then it goes to A flat major. I'm messing up my time here. So far, we haven't left the mode, but when we get to this last chord, it's a G major, and you notice I'm playing a B natural instead of a B flat. I've, we've raised that note to play this chord, which has this kind of extra drama and tension in it that makes you really feel like, ah, uh, you get back to there and it, oh, even though it's a minor chord, you feel like you've resolved something. But it also makes the major chord feel like a resolution and an even brighter and higher resolution. And that's how the turtles get us into a mode change in the chorus. I can't see me loving nobody but you, right? And then they change modes again on my life. And they've gone up to an E flat. So they're doing this change between a C major chord, a B flat major chord, a C major chord, and an E flat major chord. They keep changing modes on you, but that E flat, the way they're ending the chorus with that E flat major, if you play a C major and an E flat major over the top of it, ah, that doesn't sound good. However, if you play a C minor and an E flat major, just sounds like a cool C minor seven chord. And that's how they get us back to the minor chord again. Awesome. Mood change, mode change. So if you're composing a melody over chords like this, you probably can't just sing the first thing that comes to the top of your head. You have to be intentional and crafty about the way you craft your melody over these chords because you have a moving target with the mode. But the end result here that the turtles have got is so full of hope and romance and dynamic energy, I think you'll agree that it was worth it to put that intention into the music. It doesn't feel like an exercise in music theory, but it certainly wouldn't feel the same without those kind of changes. In Norwegian Wood, we have almost the opposite motion where we have the major chord, I once had a girl, and he keeps it in the Ionian the natural major scale that we're all used to, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, until the very end of the melody where he goes, and he uses that lowered seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to finish off the melody. And that lowered seven is becoming a theme today because the lowered seven, it's called the dominant seven because it kind of dominates the conversation until you resolve it somehow. That is kind of a gateway drug into a mode change. It can swing both ways. It can be a major chord or a minor chord. Whereas if you played a minor third, that's definitely minor. A minor six, definitely minor. That lowered seven is kind of open to either one and it can make a mode change seem more natural. And that's the case here too, where the second part goes right to the minor chord. Da, 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 da. Da 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 da, and that's that minor third, inescapably minor. That defines minor, is that lowered third. One, two, three. That defines the minor chord. It's also worth noting that the second chord of that part is an F major. So remember when I said that the third, the sixth, and the seventh are all lowered in that natural minor scale? Right? Well, here, 
we have not lowered the six. We've raised the six again, because that's part of the F major chord. So that major six is kind of our gateway drug back to da-da-da-da-da. This lowered seven when the mode is major and this raised six when the mode is minor, they each imply a sort of squirreliness. Maybe we might say in the South, you're kind of squirrely, like when a squirrel, you're about to hit a squirrel with your car and it can't decide which way to go on the road. I think that's where that came from. I don't know, squirrely, that's a word. I made it up, call me Shakespeare. Whatever you call it, it feels like it could go either way. So the benefit of playing with keys and modes on a guitar is that it's totally not linear like a piano. You can just move your fingers one fret and you're, not, you're in a whole different place. Or you can just use your capo and you can play like you're in the key of C, but put your capo on the third fret and then you're in E flat, right? So most songwriters like using open chords so they get that big strummy acoustic sound. So there's some positions that are advantageous for mixing modes. The open major chords are E, A, D, C, G. Open minor chords are E minor, A minor, and D minor. It's difficult to play an open C minor or G minor, so those positions might make this kind of mode switching difficult. The keys of E, A, and D have the advantage that each of them has a minor chord that's also open. E major, E minor. A major, A minor, D major, D minor, all open. And they even have other chords that are in those modes that are also open, like D has G and A, so on. So for instance, if I wanted to play So Happy Together in the original key of F sharp minor, I might choose to put my capo on the second fret and play it like it's in an open E. I have all these chords. C chord and the B7, that Andalusian cadence, right? And then when I get to the chorus, da, ba, ba, da, and I have the D, da, 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 and I even have this, ba, ba. I've got everything that I need in that one position. So choosing the correct position can allow you to get those big strummy chords or to finger pick things and to mix your modes. If I wanted to play Norwegian Wood, I'm pretty sure the original track is in E, so I could just use open E. Right, and when we get to the second part, we can go. Got that A major chord there for us. And back to there, and then that, that turnaround chord, the B7, maybe you just play a bar B if you wanted to. And then you're back to that E major. We could even put the capo on the second fret and play it like it's a D. La, da, 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 right? La, da, 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 da. And the G chord, that's there for our fourth chord, which is a major chord in this case. And then, ba. Back to there, we've got all the chords, not a single bar chord in the whole thing. We can even get totally crazy and put the capo on the seventh fret and play it like an A. La, da, 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 we're there. La, da, 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 da. We got an open D chord. And the E is there, we're set. Still no bar chords. You can play it in three different positions, E, D, and the A position, where you can mix those modes without a single bar chord. So let's pan for gold. Knowing what we know now, how can we use this to create a moody piece of music? Well, we saw that how the lowered seventh can be kind of this gateway between modes. So what if we just played like an A, and a G chord. So we got this. Sounds like rock and roll to me. I just went from the A major to the G. I used that E chord to turn me around, and it feels good, just as good to go to the minor that way. And I used that the D major chord, which is one, two, three, four. That's the four major of that A position. And just like he does in, uh, in John Lennon does in Norwegian Wood, right? And then maybe go back to there and come back around. It's kind of cheesy. It sounds kind of cliche, but I just created something with that. And that's the thing is to take these ideas and just mess with them until something 
makes you feel something that you can't quite explain and then just grab your phone or whatever's nearby and make a recording really quickly and honor that. I think we're all pretty good at coming up with words that communicate our thoughts, but it takes some practice to come up with music that communicates our feelings. And if you ever start feeling like theory is a little too academic or a little too numbery, just remember this is a magical thing that we can do. We can send an emotion through the air in vibrations to another human and they can feel what we are feeling. That is amazing. It's one of the most magical things I know. And that is what dabbling in a little music theory can do for your songs. Share this with a friend and challenge each other to use these ideas in a new song. You can support me on Patreon, support this channel, patreon.com slash Jonathan Bird Music. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and don't forget to write. Amen. Amen. Amen.